Hey everyone, you're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor, keep it between us. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Andrew G, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Public Affair. I've been really excited to record with this next guest. I'm really happy that we finally be able to coordinate some time. Um, so big thanks to the person that I'm about to announce on this next episode. Of course, thank you to Rogue Media Network with Mike Hamilton and my girl, Allison Robles, who edit all my episodes, shoot all my episodes, and make them look as much as up to par as I'd like. <laughs> he says I'm not a diva, so I'm, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> um, before we get started with this really great episode of the show, I definitely want to give a shout out to a few of our sponsors of this episode. I definitely want to give a shout out to my boy Joe Olvera for Brothers Constructions. He provides custom home designs and renovations. He also focuses on roofing, remodeling, plumbing, tree removal, electrical work, and so much more. Make sure you call the number on the screen so him and all his snacks can come and make your property look super snackish as well. I can't wait for them. They just posted the shower on their Facebook page, and I can't wait for it to be me and my man's from Mexico that needs papers in that shower. So Joe Olvera, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to my boy David Santa Bañez, the number one sales agent at Alinea Real Estate. to help you buy a home or sell your home. Make sure you follow him on Facebook at David with Alinea or call the number on the screen, darling, for all your real estate needs. Um, David's day selling properties. He's had a really, really great 2021. He posted his end of the year stats and they were phenomenal. And I know personally working firsthand with him that he really truly is the GOAT. David, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the show. Of course, to my boy, Frank Biza with BNJ Refinishing. He focuses on resurfacing bathtubs, counters, sinks, tiles, and more to original showroom quality. Offers five-year warranty on most work and has the best prices in town. And we all know that Frank doesn't stop there because he also offers inflatables like a mechanical bull, margarita machine, tables, chairs, a foam machine, basically like anything. If you ask Frank, does he do it? He says yes. To my boy, Frank Biza, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair with BNJ Refinishing. Of course, to my girl, Anika Armstrong strong with peewee's crab cakes on the go in hewitt texas me and david just had that for lunch the other day and i rolled around in that crab cake that colossal crab cake it was delicious she's serving the most authentic cajun cuisine with a wide selection of signature crab cakes pasta seafoods and more their top recommended is the southern fried catfish special served with seafood pasta and potato salad and six fried shrimp top with who that sauce i'm not telling you who that is because you got to go to 108 gym drive in hewitt or order online at peewee's crab cakes on the go.com Con to my girl Anika, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. And of course, to my boy Marcos Colera with Midway Nutrition, located on Hewitt Drive. He focuses on selling meal replacement shakes with tons of different flavors. Um, I think in over 80 episodes of The Public Affair, I've said that my favorite is the Honey Nut Cheerio because it truly is. So make sure you guys hit him up for a little bit more of a healthier meal replacement to Marcos Colera with Midway Nutrition. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. All right, guys. So like I said, I've been really, really excited to have this next guest on the show. Of course, I'm not really accustomed to recording this late. I really only stay up this late um, when a man is about to come over and, you know, fondle me. <laughs> In this case, uh, I just was like, okay, we'll record an episode of the show. <laughs> so um, without further ado, I would love to welcome boxing champion. Is it heavyweight champion? Welterweight. Welterweight champion, okay, Jaime Lerma, to the public affair. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. Just thank don't you punch me, me in the face after that comment, all right? Uh, <laughs> I don't fight for free. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I tried to sleep with men for money, but that's illegal, apparently. So. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, Texas. it is. No, you know, it was so cute because um, I invited Jaime on the show. So the way we met was because uh, one of my very good friends who's actually on the show as well, Jay, um, texted me and said, come to the Waco Boxing Club right now. Uh, and little did anybody know that I was in my bed with nothing on on a Sunday because that's what I do, Jaime, on Sundays, okay? With nothing on, just Nintendo. Relax on Sunday. I did, so I rolled thing. out of bed. And I was like, it's better be good. And so that's where I got to meet you. And I was really happy because we got to, um, you know, talk about you coming on the show. And it was been yes. a couple months at least, right? So Yes, I believe it was in November. Yeah, okay. So I, I really want to say that I really um, enjoyed that moment. And I was really happy when you agreed to come on and do the show. It was good uh, to meet you as well. Yeah, of course. You know, I think that you, you know, you're pretty reputable in town. I think that you've made a name for yourself. I think a lot of people know who you are. I've had some boxers on the show. Um, I've had people refer me to you. So I was like, okay, when he wants to do it, we'll do it. Okay. Yeah. And it was just cute because you were also like, you know, I'm just real straight shooter. I say what's on my mind. I was like, you've obviously never watched this show. <laughs> I'm, I'm being sued. I think I'm getting my ass whooped by like seven people. Um, some bitch was in my DMs the other day. It's this whole thing. Okay. So, so there's no rules. That. I'll say that. All right. Good. <laughs> um, hi, man. Oh, and then you're being, we're being spectated. Give a shout out to everybody outside. Hey, <laughs> you Bro, my wife, wife and cousin. Okay, who are just as feisty as you are. Okay. Yes, they <laughs> yeah. are. They are, but they, everybody has their beards. And so they cute. they fight for free. So. Oh, do they fight for free? Yeah, okay. So leave them alone. Tell them I need security. 
Yeah. These bitches are trying to fight me. I told them to stop. That's their man, not mine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, okay. Well, before we um, get started, I want you to go ahead and just introduce yourself to us, please. Tell us a little bit about who you are and such. All right. I'm, uh, of course, you said my name, Jaime Lerma. My uh, professional name in the ring is Jaime El Torito Lerma. Ooh. And uh, so I'm a uh, boxer from <laughs> here in Waco. Okay. I was born and raised here in Waco. Mm -hmm. I started boxing at the Waco Boxing Club when I was six years old. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, now you have to be at least eight years to box. Eight Is that years right? old. Okay. Yeah. Back then, it was, you know, back in the old days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I won't say what year that was. <laughs> no, say, yeah. please. No, it was, you don't it was, look like you're over 21. Uh, look, your wife over there looking like she's 18. Barely yeah, well, legal. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm robbing the cradle. Oh. oh. No, I she's like actually six like months older than older I am. Well. <laughs> <laughs> she hates it when I say that. She, yeah, I can tell she's going to come I, here and whoop your ass. <laughs> yeah, I, started, I started in 1978 when I was six oh, years old. Oh, okay, got you. And um, they, the Waco Box Club opened in 72. Oh, okay. And so I've been with them almost the whole entire time. Yeah, I've been since 78. And... You know, my dad got me started in it when I was six years old. And okay. My dad passed when I was eight. Oh, wow. And uh, I didn't want to box, didn't like it. I, mm -hmm. I wasn't a, a fighter. My little brother was beating me up back yeah. then. <laughs> and, um, but after my dad passed, I, uh, it, doing the boxing, staying with it, getting yeah. it was, was something like I was doing for my dad. Okay, got you. And, um, and also it was an escape from the depression of home life at the time. Right. I was uh, going to say that, that a lot of that stemmed from your dad passing. Yeah. So, uh -huh. you know, my, my mother was 28 years old mm. with five kids at home. Ooh, girl. And had never had to take care of the family on her own. Well, so. I'm sure she didn't plan on being a single mother either. No, I'm sure that was so, tough. So it was, yeah. it was rough. So, so, you know, boxing was my escape as well. Mm -hmm. So anyway, and I, and, and so I started to love it. I got back into it after about a year off after my dad passed. Okay. I guess I was about nine years old right. and five years later, I was top three of the nation. Oh, I was, wow. I was 14 years old. Okay. Uh, I got ranked top three of the nation. I was a bronze medalist in general Olympics. And I do think I should have got the gold. I got, <laughs> I got robbed on are that Are we last still holding decision. some resentment after all these years? Yes. Like <laughs> yes, we are. But the good thing I can say is the guy I lost to was Obakar, who became okay. a two-time world champion later. So oh, nice. Okay. I can at least say that. Yeah. Uh, I had, you know, I had an Olympian on the show, an Olympian on the show as well. Cool. Mr. Will London. Yes. Oh, awesome. Who I have to give him another episode. Long story. Yeah. But yes, oh, okay. I, I didn't do his episode justice. He deserves so much more. Yeah. yeah. Cool. We, my producer talked about it anyway awesome. <laughs> yeah it's so great to have all these young people for well this. yeah well three years later mm -hmm. i ended i became a member of the usa boxing team oh okay uh, when i was 17 uh right. that, that's the youngest you can be to be on the usa team and they, before you can travel internationally you have to be at least 17 right and they snatched you up yes they did okay <laughs> they got me based off pure talent or uh, did you have to you know well i finesse? i fought the national the defending national champion that week before and uh -huh. i dropped him in the first round oh wow and then continued to defeat yeah. him the next two, so they yeah, <laughs> yeah. maybe on the USA team. Hey, let me let me backpedal for a minute, if you don't sure. mind. You mentioned sure. a lot about um, going through a lot of depression and stuff when your dad died, and then quitting boxing and yes. such. Can you walk us a little bit about how you were able to? I mean, obviously, ultimately, boxing was able to help you cope with that and you use yes. it as a coping mechanism. But what was that like going through that? I mean, your dad probably played a, played a big part in you even starting to box. Yes, he, yeah. he. My dad got put me in it, and he's the one that wanted me to box. I didn't okay. want to. I I, I remember. Uh, telling my mother uh, at the age, I guess I was, I was probably seven by right. this time, and I asked my mother if she would tell my dad for me that okay. I didn't want to box anymore because okay. I didn't want to tell him. Right, and she just looked at me, and I, I mean, I still remember mm -hmm. the moment when she looked at me and said, "It's okay, go ahead, uh, and go ahead and tell him." Okay. I didn't want to. Yeah, like, yeah, mom, yeah. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> Is it? Well, well, but like, why? Did you think he was going to whoop your ass or something? Or? Well, we did get disciplined as kids. Yeah, we yeah. Did, but I've never been in prison. Uh, okay. I'm not having a criminal record. I, yeah. <laughs> I respect my adults. Yeah. I, I think kids should be getting their asses whipped now. Okay. Because uh, our kids these days are very disrespectful. Oh, yeah, they, they are. Crap. I, listen, I tell all these people, if your kids are going to come to me and talk to me any type of way, I'm going to whip their ass like they're my kids. <laughs> right. All right? Yeah. Right. I tell the parent when they bring their kids to the gym, like, this isn't cheerleader camp. Uh, okay, got you. So, so you take over the discipline rules. Yes. Okay, got you. So <laughs> when you drop your kids that. off, they belong to me. Okay, got you. you. pick them up. So but, did uh, you ever tell your dad, hey, so like. I, so I did. I, okay. I, I uh, spoke to him and let him know that. Uh, you know, I was nervous and said, Dad, I, uh, I don't like, I don't want to box. Yeah, know, yeah. That's not what I want. And surprisingly, he just looked at me and said, okay. Okay. That's fine. And I was like, really? He said, no. Yes. Said, I'll be. 
Yeah. It's like, cool. <laughs> yeah. So he said, well, all right, well, we're about to leave to the gym. Mm -hmm. My older brother, and then by this time, my younger brother was six years old, so he could box. I was seven. Okay. We're only 15 months apart in age. Got you. So he said, we're going to the gym. You want to go ahead and ride with us? Yeah. Well, yeah, all right. I don't have to do anything. Yes, let me yeah. go ride with you. <laughs> so we rode, went to the gym. By the time we got there, I'm sitting down watching everybody run. Right. We always started out running. And uh, I just jumped down and started running with them because I didn't have to. Okay, I said, let you. me go ahead and run. So I just ran with them. Before I knew it, I did the whole workout. <laughs> so there was and, really like and, no and, escape. And I never, yeah. even, I went back every day after that. <laughs> I guess knowing that I could quit if I wanted to yeah. made it easier for me to do it. Okay, I got so, you. So your dad was the main source of inspiration. Yeah, so my, in your my dad okay. never boxed. My dad uh, never done any sports. Right. He, um, like most most Hispanics growing up, uh, he grew up poor. Yeah. His family. Okay. And he had a lot of brothers and sisters and mm -hmm. a big family. And, you know, my dad uh, had a good job. He right. made good money. My mom didn't have to work. My mom just stayed home, took care of us. So my dad had three sons and said, I'm going to put my kids in every sport I couldn't be in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So <laughs> that's what I want to do too. You know, I was, what we did. I was talking to one of my friends earlier because my I did not do sports growing up. Uh, yeah. And so I'm, really? Yeah, it's I hard, do. It's yeah, hard yeah, to yeah, tell. Yeah, so it's because I'm a showman. I'm for the camera, okay? And so, You're um, so buff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so I was telling one of my friends that when I have um, a son or such, that I'm going to put them like in masculine sports too because I don't want him being no little bitch. You know what I mean? Because I exactly. know I was a little bitch when I was a kid. <laughs> and I, I don't want him to be a little bitch. When I <laughs> Just I'm, I'm that bitch now. It's a difference. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, one hundred percent. I'm, that, I'm bitch. that bitch now. It's a, it's a whole difference. It's a yeah. difference. Yeah, but no, I was definitely telling my friends. I was like, yeah, you know, when I have a son, when I have a daughter too, I want them to be in sports because I feel like it. I mean, you would probably agree that things like boxing and just, just sports in general, it also builds like social skills and stuff oh, like yes. that, wouldn't and you say? You, yeah. Well, well, self esteem, confidence. It, yeah, it, and and it's also you, you learn a respect for not only other people but your, yourself okay, as I well. Got you. So. Yeah, it's great. Even though people don't realize it's a one on one sport, mm -hmm. you know, in boxing, you're the only one in that ring. Right. Nobody's in there with you. Nobody's there to throw punches for you. It's only you. Right. But it is a team sport. There is a camaraderie in there with your teammates okay. that you're there supporting and you're behind, you're helping. You push them along in the gym as well. The, gotcha. the, the more experienced boxers in the gym will help the younger okay. ones. Yeah. Uh, along. So it's great. So what did you do different, Jaime, that I mean, you, you were competing in all these tournaments at a very young age at 17 you said was the like the beginning age and stuff like that for the usa team for the yes. usa team yes. okay what, what, what is that like where does the usa team well where are they based out of uh colorado springs colorado with the oh, okay. training center. yeah 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 okay yeah the olympic <laughs> training center is yeah. in colorado springs colorado and the usa championships would be at the olympic training center every okay. year okay so you go there for the championships uh you know the best in the nation from well the best from every state mm -hmm. there is there are 12 weight classes in amateur boxing okay and there's one champion in each weight class from uh. all 50 states oh okay so all of us are there at the nationals and there's three boxing rings going on at one time okay so there's a lot because to lot accommodate on. all the fights in the tournament last five days right right and it's elimination okay one fight elimination it isn't like Basketball, you play seven games and win. I don't yeah. understand. If you beat them one time, you win. Yeah, yeah. Why do you have to do it so, four times? So in this in this particular instance, though, like yeah. once you lose, you lose. Okay, in boxing, you. you lose, you lose. That's it. Okay. And uh, you can't start your season over next year. No. Really? Your record stays with you throughout There's, your So career. is there no, like, room for redemption? Not really. Really? Only a rematch. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you, you know, it, it, like the next year, you can go to the championships again. Okay, but, got you. But it never erases the losses okay they never get erased they're still there they're still there okay but like so how what did you do when you first lost uh did you i take cried it pretty hard okay yeah <laughs> i was six years old when i first lost oh I, really okay. I, I couldn't pay anybody to lose to me back then right i got my ass whooped every fight when i first started <laughs> but do you think do you think a lot of your pent-up aggression like when you were going through your depression and stuff do you think that that followed you like in your school life were you getting into a lot of fights and stuff like that as well no not okay. really i didn't um you know, I did have some. Yeah, everybody goes through. through see, that. I never fought. No, see, I didn't. Yeah, well, <laughs> I was just always a bitch. Well, well, <laughs> well I guess I fought because I didn't run. <laughs> okay, I got you. I'm, but, um, I'm a runner, Jaime, I will okay, say. Well, I can't fight for shit. I ran into somebody today that I know wanted to fuck me up, and I yeah. I, I started shitting my pants. I'm not even well, going to lie. Well, yeah. if you do that, they won't want to fight you. Yeah, either. no, well, I hope not. They told me that they were going to fuck me up, and then I ran into them, and I, I just immediately had the flop sweat and the diarrhea, and I was like, oh, oh my well, God, somebody know. better defend 
than me because I can't do it. <laughs> well, I've been approached. I've been approached by a group before, and they, oh. they've told me we're gonna fuck you up. Okay. And I said, "Well, I hope so." There's five of you got now. Yeah, uh, did they fuck <laughs> you? If up? you can, it's pretty no. <laughs> no, okay. They they actually ended up doing nothing. They just were all talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't I mean, like fighting. I don't. You know, I'm not. Mm. And believe it or not, dude, most boxers don't want to fight. Right. They don't. Well, you do People, it as a job. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If, you're, if you're changing tires at work all day, you don't want to go you're home. Don't change no damn tires. No. Yeah. You know, I don't want to. You know, after this, I don't want to fucking talk to nobody. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't want to talk to anybody. Right. It's crazy. I mean, people have a misconception yeah. that boxers are, are aggressive people, or right. we beat up our wives at home. We're doing that. <laughs> Man, my wife would kill me if I tried to. Get I hear you. you know what? I have tons of questions it's, about that as well, and I definitely want to get into it. I definitely yeah. also want to get into your career highlights and such. Uh, we yeah. are going to take a quick little break. Cool. Okay. And when we get back, we'll get more into your accolades. Um, yeah. Um, more into your boxing career when you went pro and more. So make yeah, sure you guys stay I, tuned. I think I need another beer. <laughs> Break it open, dog. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode with Jaime Lerma. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Before we proceed, I wanted to take this opportunity to give a shout out to a few more of our sponsors of The Public Affair. Of course, this episode is brought to you by Elite Barbershop with my boy Sid Rodriguez located on Hewitt Drive. You can download the Cut app or call the number on the screen to book. He also has Marcus Guerrero, Chris Reyes, Santos Cordova, D-Rod or David Rodriguez and Isaac over there making you look super snackish like they've made me look for all my episodes of The Public Affair and I love me some Elite Barbershop. Make sure you book with the number on the screen or download the Cut app. Thank you guys so much for for sponsoring this episode. Of course, the Banda's Hauling Service with Julian and Ana Banda. They rent dump trailers. You fill it up and they haul it away. They also do junk removals and tree brush removals and haul cars in and out of town. I definitely feel like that's one of those companies that you don't think you need it, but then you actually really do. Make sure you book the number with the number on the screen now. It's a Banda's Hauling Service. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, the Brothers Concrete Construction with my boy Jesus Gonzalez. He specializes in concrete work like slabs, driveways, pool decks, patios, sidewalks, and and more. Um, I got to see his work firsthand and it's absolutely great. He does beautiful work and you have to call him on the number on the screen for your free estimate. To Brother Concrete Construction with Jesus Gonzalez, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair and of course to Jay Pedal and Poke with Junior Fuentes and Thomas Roberts and the entire family. They provide delicious savory Japanese crepes and poke bowls. They also have handcrafted Thai roll ice cream for dessert. You can choose from the menu or create your own like I like to do because like I say in all their ads, I like to be in control. Control. Make sure you check out their locations on University Park Drive and Hewitt Drive or place your order online at jpedaltx.com. Thank you guys again so much for watching this episode. Now we get back to Mr. Jaime Lerma on The Public Affair. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to The Public Affair. Um, so me and Jaime were just getting into how um, there's this big con misconception about boxers beating the shit out of their wives and other people <laughs> and how they always want to fight and that's not the case. Uh, we definitely were going to start getting into your more uh, uh, your professional career as well. But as you okay. were saying before, um, you know, you I think that you were mentioning how you there's a lot of misconception about you as a boxer yes. and that you're just constantly <laughs> aggressive and stuff like well, that. Well, boxers, but. period. We we, okay. just, we get a bad rap because, you know, just because of a couple of, of bad apples in, mm -hmm. in the game have, have done some things. But, I mean, seriously, if you think back and think about it, how yeah. many have you actually heard about? Right, right, right. You know, there's not a whole lot. You hear yeah. about a couple of them here and there, but that's it. Boxers, one thing... It's it, we don't we know how to control our team because it's mm -hmm. a it, we're trained to control our anger. Oh, okay. Because you can't fight when you're angry. Right. You'll lose. Okay. You can't be angry when you fight because you can't focus on what you need to do. Uh -huh. You can't remember your game plan. You can't stick to what you're planning. Right. Because you're angry and that anger blocks out you mentally how mm. you need to focus and do what you need to accomplish. Got you. So you can't do it. So boxers okay. know how to control it. And on top of that, we know how to. As far as hitting goes, mm -hmm. people think, oh, well, he's a boxer, so he, he shouldn't be disciplining his kids. Right. Or he tries to hit somebody. No, we know how to hit. Okay. We know how to hit. Yeah. Better than someone off the streets does. So right, right, right. We can control it. We right. know how to just. To so not you're not necessarily somebody. angry when you're in the ring punching no. somebody in their face. No. You're just doing it as a sport. Hey, I've been in the ring with many friends. Hey, yeah. I, I fought my little brother. Really? Like <laughs> yes. in the ring? Or yes, just, in okay. the ring. Got you. No, at home he beat me up. In the <laughs> ring I beat him. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we were young. We were yeah. young at that time. We were kids. Yeah. As, he, as we got older and progressed, he learned a lot. Uh, we, we learned a lot 
from each other. Okay, I got ring. you. But, um, I would, you know, it, makes, it takes me back. I really wish that I would have learned those disciplines like you guys yeah. have learned and stuff like that. And I've had some, you know, even the two boxers that I've had on this show, I've had Noni and I've had Carlos, and they, they were very kind. I, I, I always imagined them being more aggressive, like, because I didn't meet them until we were on the show. Yes. You know what I mean? And so when when you meet them outside, they're just so kind and very soft spoken yeah. and they're cool. Like, Noni was actually giving me really great at dating advice the other day, which I never <laughs> okay. thought I'd get from fucking Noni. Yeah. He was, well, he was basically telling me to stop treating myself like a side piece because that's what I've been doing is that now I'm just a whore and I'll just screw on the first date and then oh, he gave wow. me that advice and the guy took me on a date I was like oh shit okay it works you know? cool. anyway there you go. <laughs> yeah, okay. well something worked <laughs> yeah it did it did well you know it's great well, but you know well they didn't they didn't compete a whole lot no. I, I know both of them I've trained oh, okay. I've trained both of them gotcha uh, I, t- I started training Noni when he was probably 13 oh 14. really yeah so and, and well they didn't have a whole lot of competition they didn't you know they Noni was a decent boxer and uh and Carlos as well, but uh, they didn't do a lot with it. They, Noni did turn pro, but mm-hmm. you know, yeah, but, I was gonna say well, Noni we'll talked see, a lot about his pro career and stuff. Yeah, well, well, a lot mm-hmm. of people also have a misconception that just because you turn pro boxing, oh, you must be a badass. No, uh-huh. I mean to be honest with you, you could turn pro tomorrow if you wanted to. Okay, it costs twenty dollars. Uh, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, gotcha. That's all it is. Fill out an application, get a physical from your doctor saying you're mm-hmm. healthy, and pay twenty dollars, and you're a professional boxer. Okay, you will get a license saying you're a professional boxer in right, the state right. of Texas. For you know, so it, it's anybody anybody can do that. Okay. Just like an amateur, people think, oh, well, you fought Golden Gloves. You, oh wow, you must have really did something. Right. Golden Gloves isn't even the most prestigious tournament. You can win the national Golden Gloves, and you're still only ranked number five in the country. Mm-hmm. Even though you won a national Golden Gloves tournament, okay. you still want to get ranked number five. Right. You have to win a USA championship to get ranked number one. Okay, I got you. So, like, the national Golden Gloves champion was ranked further back than I was. Mm-hmm. And is I Golden, didn't is Golden Gloves more like a, like a local thing, or is that like a national Golden thing? Golden Gloves okay. is all over. Is it's it? all okay, over. Okay, got you. The Golden Gloves used to be bigger back, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, mm-hmm. 70s. It's not as big as it is. Okay, got you. As it was then. Yeah. But, and nothing, I'm not knocking Noni or Carlos at all. Uh-huh. I, I respect them. I respect anybody who puts on a pair of gloves and climbs in that ring. Yeah, because I sure as hell couldn't do it. Like, mm, yeah. I could pay any money in the world, yeah. and I can't be pro to save my life. Hey, so. any, anybody that's got yeah. their heart and the courage well, to step I, in that I, square I, ring, they got my respect. I, and I definitely want to say too, like you know, when I re- when I invited those two specifically, and we t- mm-hmm. we talk about Noni and we talk about Carlos specifically, like you know, as the boxers, because you're my third boxer to be on the show, and you know, you're a little bit more seat. Well, of course, you're more seasoned. You know, you've been in the game a lot longer and such. And, you know, I'm sure you have different perceptions and stuff. But at the end of the day, I think that those two have a really great head on their shoulders, and they, they were did. always very kind to me. And you know, I always. I, I've met a lot of boxers, <laughs> okay. and there was something about um, watching Noni's highlights, and there was something about even watching Carlos, who's a lot younger than both of us. Yes, uh, you know, and, and watching the way that they they did they, they discipline themselves and stuff like that that really attracted me into inviting them onto the public affair. And well, that was, boxing you know, is a very disciplined sport. Yeah, exactly. You can't play. But, boxing. I, but I also, but I also know boxers that might play boxing. Do you see what I'm saying? And well, that I've, I've known. I've there known, are a lot of them that are yeah. not. They're not dedicated. They, their heart's not in it. They're uh-huh. just. Because I, I know boxers that are not that disciplined. That I, you know what I mean. So I had the misconception as well. But you know, and I guess in regards to you know meeting those two, it really changed my perspective. Yes. You know what I mean. So, um, well, but yeah, you know, let's talk a little bit more about your going pro though. Like, yes. what, what was that like first time? Did you not pay the twenty dollars? Or <laughs> <laughs> yes, I paid the twenty dollars. Okay, gotcha. Uh, well, I was getting. I was being scouted when I was 17. Okay. I had managers already because I I was already ranked top. I've been ranked top three of the nation since I was 14. Mm-hmm. So. I was being scouted at an early age. They were trying to get me to turn pro at 17, and I wanted to wait for the Olympics. I was already on the USA team. So. Okay. And, and and in 91, they decided that in 1992 for the Olympics, they were going to come back with the computerized scoring system, Okay. which I do not agree with. Well, what is that? Like, I don't understand. Well, there's uh, there's five judges for a boxing match, you know, okay. amateur boxing, and you have a red button and a blue button in your hand. Okay. And every time you see the red corner score a point, you click that red button. Scoring you see the blue pointer, corner, the blue corner scores okay. a point. And at least three judges have to score that point within a second of each other, or it does not count. Oh, wow. Yes, it's bullshit. Okay. So, <laughs> so how did they do it back in your in your day? It was a just 10-point scoring system. Okay. You know, the, the, the judges scored the round, and they gave the winner 10 points and the loser 9 points. Oh, okay, gotcha. And uh, and that's the way that it totaled up. Right, right. Uh, like in professional boxing, 10-point scoring system. Okay. And um, 
And I even remember when I first saw when they were actually counting punches, landed. Right. So, and then they totaled them. But anyway, I didn't agree I with that. that's how they did it. Yeah, I didn't. No, I don't know. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, well, if you ever watch any professional boxing on TV, mm-hmm. you hear them say, well, we're working on the 10 point scoring system. Yeah. That's what they mean. The uh, winner okay. gets 10 points, the loser gets nine. Uh, okay, gotcha. Unless he was totally dominated, he gets eight. Yeah. Or he gets dropped, <laughs> he gets eight. Yeah, he gets dropped sure. twice, he gets seven. Okay. So that's how it works. So, okay, I got you. Uh, so. You know, I didn't. I didn't agree with it. I didn't think it would work. It's mm-hmm. not. It said, so I said. I told my coach. I said, you know what? Fuck the amateurs. Let's okay. go pro. Let's go pro. We got managers been talking to us. Let's just do it. And my okay. my trainer never encouraged me to go pro. Mm-hmm. He 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 supported the Olympics, and uh, he was actually when um when I became. I got to tell you this. So yeah, go, yeah, go, go back just a little bit. Yeah. When uh, after the U.S. championships, I told you I dropped the national champion in the first round. Uh huh. You know, after the fight was over, and I got screwed in this fight. Yeah, okay. Way. I dropped him in the first round. He ran from the next two. I was working him over, going, moving. Yeah. After the third round, you know, not a lot of people know this story. Okay. But uh, he came up share. to me after the <laughs> Share it on the show. Uh, well, uh, there's a few more I might share okay, with you, too. Okay. <laughs> but um, he came up to me at the end of the fight, you know, because boxers, like I said, we're not violent people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like people try to think we are. He came up and gave me a hug, said, you know, and I never met him before this night. Right. He said, uh, you're going to win the whole tournament. He said, nobody's going to touch you. Because he okay. knew he was the one predicted to win. I got you. He said, you got it. Yeah. You got it, man. You won. Man, good luck with the next few fights. Huh. I saw it. And, uh, but at the end, they raised his hand at the end of the fight. Oh, wow. He was just as shocked as I was. And uh, my oh. consolation prize was they invited me to be on the USA team. Okay. Because of how well I performed. even Because they, they knew they screwed me on that decision. I, I still get mad about that, but and, um, <laughs> so, so so it was it was bad. I didn't like it, but okay. <laughs> but I became a member of the USA team anyway, and I got to travel the world with the USA team. I was on the team like I said with Sugar Shane Mosley, Oscar Deloy, uh-huh. Ivan Robinson, Winky Wright, Tim Austin, yeah. Larry Donald, Chris Bird, Shannon Bridge. All these guys are world champions. Why not speak up though? Why like do you? I mean, if you feel like because even, even now, I mean, it was years and years and years ago. There's nothing you can do about it. Once those judges make their decision, they're not gonna go back on it. Okay, gotcha. I um, mean, it's, it's like a court of law. If a judge thinks he did something wrong, is he going to tell anybody? Hell yeah. No. But huh. I mean, even when I was on the USA team, okay. I did a competition once. It was USA versus USSR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we and we actually fought here in the states. It, it, uh, we fought on the Denver Nuggets basketball court. Oh, okay. And mile next door to Mile High Stadium. Now, yeah, yeah. now they've moved. Got but you. at that time, Mile High Stadium was right next door to Denver Nuggets. Uh huh. In Denver, and we we competed there. Okay. Uh, and I com- I fought the Russian who was ranked number three in the world at the time. Right, right. And it was a fucking fight. Let me tell you, both <laughs> of us got out of that ring black and blue. Wow, really? We fought the entire time. Oh. Uh, it was. I mean, did you enjoy the love, moment? Oh, I loved, yeah, okay. man, I love. I love <laughs> fighting. I love being in the middle of the ring. Right. I'm not a boxer. I'm not going to run around and dance. Yeah. When the bell rings, motherfucker, let's fight. Okay, gotcha. It's time to go. Right. Don't run. Let's do this. Right. And that's and Russians are a lot like Latinos. Okay. They're fighters. They're fighters. <laughs> so when you They're fight, ferocious. Yes. Yeah. Some oh. Russians are hot too, like Latinos. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's some hot Russian women I saw. Oh, right? We're not going to talk about Careful, that. Careful, the no. wife's outside. Uh, she needs earphones. Yeah. Uh, but um, so it, after the fight, you know, it was a great fight. I was announced yeah. the winner. Anyway, okay. I was announced the winner. I've, I had my plaque in my hand. I'll go to the dressing room. Yeah. A few minutes later, uh, the head trainer of the USA team was Pat Nappy. Mm-hmm. He came in there uh, and he told me, he said, I mean, I'm sorry, this is bullshit. He said, but I'm going to have to get that plaque from you. So what are you talking about? And the officials came in behind him. They said, I mean, this is, uh, I don't even know how to say this, but the judges said they were wrong. Oh, they're overturning the decision. Oh, wow. And they're giving the Russian uh, the first place plaque. Okay. And you're getting runner up. So what the, f- I've never in my life yeah. ever seen that. Mm-hmm. And I still to this day have never seen it again. Okay. But that happened. Why why did that happen? Well, at the time, USSR, Mm -hmm. it wasn't Russia, it was USSR. Okay. And and there was a lot of things going on between politically the USA and USSR. Oh, okay. That that guy was not supposed to lose. So they stripped me of, of my win. Oh, wow. And so it happens. You know, it's bullshit, but it happens. You know, and speaking to you in just this few minutes <laughs> that we've been together, it sounds like a lot of things that happened to you sound 
it sounds like a lot of unjust things happen to you. And, and, and you know, as you know, you, you definitely come off to me as very much, even when I met you, like you're very outspoken and, you know, you're very entitled to your opinion, which I, uh, you know, I appreciate, of course. Um, but in these particular instances, it didn't seem like you stood up for yourself. Like, why? Well, I couldn't. My trainers uh -huh. and, and officials, I mean, the, my head trainer, Pat Nappy, was the highest you could be in the mm. United States as far as the trainers. He was our head trainer. And I argued. I said, it's bullshit. Right. I won the fight. I said, you watched the fight. I won. And Pat Nappy agreed. He said, but there's nothing we can do about it. The mm. judge is overturning the decision. You can't. I mean, if a judge tells you you committed a murder you didn't commit, okay. are you? I mean, can you say, no, I'm leaving? I just feel like for me personally, um, I've been through a lot of injustice as well. Okay. But I'm one to speak of. Yeah. And, and I'm not going down without a motherfucking fight. And I expect uh, nothing less from a, a, a championship boxer. I talk some shit. <laughs> yeah. I do talk you know? some shit. Yeah. Because nobody plays those games with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen, a, a lot of it had to do with my career prior to this you yes. know what i mean with, with radio you know what i mean there was a lot of shit yes. i had to speak up for you yes. know because like i created this you can't take this mm -hmm. from me oh, no. you know what yeah. i mean and yeah. so you don't get to just think that you can have whatever you want a legend well, <laughs> you know what uh, i mean so you know i'm just saying like well they couldn't take the fight away from me okay they could just take the plaque away from me the fight but is if it's an accolade, everyone then you saw achieved. it it was on yeah. espn everybody saw it you know, everybody that watched that fight knows I won the fight. But okay. hey, it's just what happened. But do you do you think a lot of the the things that you went through back in the day influenced like how you are now? Or is that always High Miller man? Well, politics, you know, it, not even politics. Well, all these we, awards we, that were stripped from you that you deserve. Well, the, well, you know? the, it's all politics. Oh, okay. You know, with like that, boxing that they, they, okay. yes, boxing politics. Gotcha. I don't mean politically with our presidents okay, or gotcha, anything. Yeah. I mean, the politics of boxing. Okay. You know, the controversial decisions, a lot of that are just, it's just politics and boxing. It happens. If you watch boxing now, because right now boxing, boxing is mm. not as good as it used to be. Okay. And, you know, I'm be the first to admit it. I, I love boxing. I believe boxing is the best sport in the world. Okay. But I'll, I'll be the first to admit it's not what it used to be. I'm sorry, that was cute. I heard the beer pop from <laughs> I, is that what that was? That was her beer. Yeah, it wasn't my beer. That was someone that was else's. Cute. Go ahead. Mine's already open. But, um, You're but, good. But it happens. And, yeah. And a lot of that did make me who I am in the ring and out of it. Okay. Because in that ring, I tell my kids in the gym now that it's – you get in that ring, you're going to come out a completely different person. Mm -hmm. The first time you get in there, okay. you're going to be a different person. Boxing gotcha. just does that to you. Right. It does. And um, go back a little bit again. When um, After the U.S. Championships, mm -hmm. when uh, I was robbed of that, that first place title, the gold okay. medal, I got the bronze. But um, I got home that next week. I'm in the gym. Mm -hmm. My trainer is Gilbert Cuate Sanchez, okay. senior. It's Cuate. He went by Cuate. And um, – he calls me to the front. He says, I mean, you got a phone call. Jim Fox at the time was the president of Amateur Boxing Federation okay. in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay, got you. He said, Jim Fox is on the phone, wants to talk to you. I was like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> I thought, <laughs> last, <laughs> well, I was thinking, okay, what did I do last week when I was there at yeah. the Colorado, the Olympic Training Center? I was like, oh, what did I do? So I get on the phone, and uh, he says, uh, Jaime Lerma? I said, yes, sir. Uh -huh. He said, I just wanted to call to see if you'd be interested in being a member of the USA boxing team. Uh-huh. Yes, of course. Of course. Right. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yes. My first question is always, how much does it pay? Well, well in, <laughs> in amateur boxing, you can't. Uh, okay, you can't I was going to say, like, even I yeah. wish we could have. Yeah. How much? Uh, how much does it pay? What's it pay? <laughs> at, at that time, yeah. it was nothing. But later, a year later, they were paying me to be on the USA. Oh, okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Which it it does work in a different way, right? But, but you can get paid. Um, was that like a, a long term career for you? Like, did you live? Well, did your family live off of you boxing for a whole minute? Uh, no, my family did not live off of uh, my okay. boxing, especially as an amateur. Like I said, I didn't get paid. We're as getting an that much, yeah. Okay. I didn't get paid as an amateur, and um, uh, you know, they did later pay me as a USA team member. They uh -huh. will pay you because. You're at training camp so much, you really don't have time to. You can't work. Okay. Because your job is boxing. Gotcha. So they were paying me how much my utilities were, how much my rent, how much groceries I bought, food I, I bought every month. They would, they would take all that into consideration, and they would send you a check every month to help you live. Oh, okay. That way you could continue to fight for the USA team. Yeah, I got you. You had to be one of the top fighters to get that. Maybe I'd be lying though. It is. <laughs> okay. Well, I, think, I think we all yeah. kind of. Kind of bump that up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I sure as hell would. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and it was listen, great. Do you get do you get paid for losing? 
Uh, as a pro, yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. As a professional, yes. Yeah, I got you. Know? you. But anyway, get back a little bit back Sorry, when I said uh, Jim Fox called and asked me if I could be if I would be a member of USA team. Of course, uh-huh. I said yes. And um, I said, great. I hung up the phone, and my trainer, Kwate, looked at me, and he said, uh, what do you want? I said, he wanted to know if I wanted to be on the USA team. Yeah. He's like, are you serious? I said, fuck yeah, this is, man, this is badass. <laughs> and, and I was so excited. I didn't even want to train. I was like, man, I got, I got to go back there. I got to go. Because okay. I was in the middle of training. Yeah. I was like, I got to finish my workout. But I was so excited about it. And, you know, we talked for a minute. And then I went back there to work out. And a few minutes later, he, he says, hi, man, uh, come back up front. Right. He said, Jim Fox on the phone again. Oh, shit. Okay, got you. I said, hey, did you forget something? He said, no, hi, man, I was actually looking for your trainer, mm-hmm. Gilbert Sanchez, right. senior. I said, oh, I said, Quate, the phone's for you. Yeah. And uh, he got on the phone. He said, yes, yes, sir. He said, okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Fine. All right. Hey, bye. He hung up. I said, what happened? He said, they asked me if I wanted to be a coach for the USA boxing team. So my trainer and I literally made the USA team together. Together. Okay. So it was pretty badass. So, yeah. Yeah, Jim Fox was like, all right, well, I already mailed you a a plane ticket. Yeah, there you go. You'll be here this weekend. When do I leave? Oh, this weekend. Yeah, that weekend. He's like, you'll be here this weekend for training. Yeah. Did you have a family already by that time and everything? uh, I did have a son. No, I didn't. Yes, Mm. I did. My son had just been born. Okay. Uh, Hyman Jr. was born February 26th. What year? 1991. Oh, Nin- me too. 1990. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. 1990. I'm 91. All right. He was What's up, Hyman Jr.? Yes. <laughs> Hyman Jr., he's a year older than you. He, gra- he graduated from Baylor like 10 years ago. Oh, is that Nine right? years ago. Educated. Yes, he is. Yes. He's smart. <laughs> see, I, I was smart before I got punched in the head a lot. Yeah, I got you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah, people... Uh, he said, if somebody says, I'm, a, I'm I'm not attractive. I said, well, I got punched in the face for a living. What's your excuse? You <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so it was cool. My trainer and I made the U.S. team together. So okay. we got to travel the world together. Mm-hmm. My trainer was a coach for the USA team. Mm-hmm. So he coached Mosley and De Loya and White Wright, Shannon Briggs, all these guys. Right. He got to, he got to actually train them. Yeah. So it, it was pretty awesome, not just for me, but for Waco Boxing Club. Yeah, and the trainer. You, you know, um, there, you know, we talked a lot about losing and stuff like that, and you know, you mentioned that you've lost some fights as yes. well. And you know, I I had known a boxer um, who lost one fight and like it seemed like he completely gave it up and was like, "Fuck this, I'm not doing this anymore." And then you know, I've had people like Carlos come on the show and um, you know talk to me about his like losing and stuff like that. And you know, it, I had to always find it admirable to know like. Because I always told somebody like him, like, don't let it be the last, like, you know, you got to keep going. You know what I mean? Like, because I've lost a lot, too. Not in boxing, per se. But, you know, I, I lost the whole radio career. <laughs> so, you know, well, you know, and so. I, you know, I, well, we lose in life sometimes. Yeah, you know, and so I always I always thought that it was pretty admirable for somebody like that to, you know, like when I was mentioning earlier how they keep a good head on their shoulders to just keep going. You know, do you, do you find it hard to do something like that? You know, like, did, were there ever times that you just wanted to throw in the towel and be like, fuck this. I can't, I'm not well, doing this. Well, it, it is hard. I, um. Uh-huh. At one time in uh, in my pro career, I was uh, undefeated. When mm-hmm. I, I started, I, you know, I turned pro at eighteen. Right. I was competing on international television networks at the age of of eighteen. Right. I mean, it, it's it's not a whole lot of boxers turn pro that young. Okay. And um, and I was already competing on international networks at, yeah, yeah, at, at yeah. eighteen, and and I I did a fight. Um, one of the most humbling moments of my life, I did a fight here in Waco uh-huh. in front of my hometown, in front yeah. of all my friends and family. Yeah. And um, I got a little, I guess I got a little big headed. I got arrogant. Okay. I was undefeated, eight no, five knockouts. Yeah, yeah. And I'm fighting at home, my hometown. And <laughs> and I got in a fight with a Mexican fighter. Uh-huh. I still remember his name. And uh, give him a shout out, goddamn Jorge, uh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but um, Jorge, last name Jorge Montoya. Oh, okay. And um, he's a Mexican fighter out of Mexico. And, and yeah. um, he come in and I was dominating, I was winning the fight, okay, every yeah, round, every yeah round. for sure. But he was a dirty fighter, elbowing, uh, shoulders, oh, head wow. butting, and, and he kept on working on my right eye, mm. elbowing my right eye, his shoulder, and everything. My right eye was swollen shut by the fifth round. Oh, wow, so I couldn't see okay. out of that eye. So he kept he kept throwing uh he kept throwing punches it was actually I'm sorry it was my left my left eye okay. swollen shut regardless I was saying right, right. it was my <laughs> left eye because he was throwing his right hand I couldn't see it yeah so I kept getting hit I'm wondering how many motherfuckers are in here I couldn't see it yeah like, God dang it and um anyway I ended up 
it, it, it kept hitting me, and I was winning the fight, but he right. kept hitting me and hit me, and I finally just, you know, I was like, man, I can't see it. I can't. Right. I ended up, you know, this is the first time I've ever, I've actually, actually ever said this uh, uh, publicly, but I, I quit. Okay. I basically quit. I like said, you just like right there. I right there. Okay, gotcha. It was like in the sixth round, seventh round. I said, man, I, I told the referee I can't see. Okay. I can't see. Out of my left eye, I can't see. This guy keeps hitting me because I can't see coming. Right, right. And you know, I'm a 19 year old kid. Right. I was. I'm not gonna. I'm not ashamed of it. I was scared, and uh, I didn't. You know, it, it freaked me out. I didn't know I couldn't see, and this guy keeps hitting me in that eye, even though I was winning. Yeah. Every scorecard I was winning, and the judge. All I had to do was move, run from the guy, stay away from him. Right. For another two rounds, I would have won a fight. Yeah. And said, I, I said, I'm man, fuck it. That's it. I yeah. gave up. I did a no mas thing. <laughs> I, did, I pulled Roberto Durant, and um, so that was a very, very like humbling, humbling moment. For you, moment. Yeah. you know, that happening, not just it happening, uh-huh. but it happened on live television in over seventy different countries. Oh wow! And in front of my hometown, yeah, my family and friends here. So that was uh. It was a moment that most people don't know. That, okay. Um, I mean, the, the people that were there, of course, knew. But well, so so how do you bounce back from something like that? I it mean, was tough. Yeah. It was tough. Okay. But uh, I had to get back right away. I knew I did. My trainer mm. talked. We talked. And see, I need to get back in the gym immediately right. and hurry up and get back in the ring as soon as possible okay. and re- redeem that to, to yeah. build my confidence. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and that's what we did. I just got back in the gym. And okay. after that, I started hitting it. I, I got back into the groove that I needed to be. I needed that loss. I yeah. needed it. I okay. needed it bad because I was a little too. But that's what I'm too saying. I think that things. everybody, like we all, there's always going to be somebody in the corner that's better than you. Yes. You know what I mean? And so I, I was disappointed in that one boxer from back in the day that I knew that when they lost that one fight, they, they really were just like, fuck this. I'm not doing this anymore. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, because they, you know, they're like, I'm not, I'm never going to lose. I'm never going to lose. I'm always going to win. I'm always going to win. I can't lose. I'm not losing. Then you lost. You know yes. what I mean? Like, I didn't, nobody, I don't think judged you for that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we well, all take well, losses. People do judge you. Do, well, people, trust listen, me. people are going to talk <clears throat> shit. Uh, Hyman, please. All right. I've been, yes. <laughs> I've been doing this show for over uh, almost two years already. All right. And people always got a fucking opinion. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and well, same I'm can be you, said for boxing. You boxers, know? So, we, we've got yeah. some of the worst critics. Because, first of all, the people that are judging you, they ain't got the balls to do what we do. Yeah. They ain't got the fucking heart or the balls. Mm-hmm. It, they, I mean, they wouldn't even lace a glove up. Right, but, right. But they're, they'll be quick to judge you and say, oh, well, you should have done this. You should have done that. Well, right. Hey, why don't you, you get come in, in here. Yeah. Do. Listen, I'm not getting in the ring with no boxer and, uh, unless he's trying to. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. That's, that's a, a different, different ring. That, that sure is. That's a different ring. <laughs> I use that anyway. That's more of a rectangle, not a square. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> why does he know that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. But, uh, hey, don't tell nobody. No, I won't. But, um, we keep it between us. Hey, this is the way we're on the air, though. Be quiet. <laughs> no, but um, you said a mouthful already. Just keep going. <laughs> I can feel a mouth, but we'll, 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 leave, that, we'll, we'll leave that alone. We'll leave Hi, my darling, please. <laughs> we'll leave that alone. Uh, no, uh, I'm, I'm listen. I'm in heat right now. Uh, Stop. Okay, uh, it's that time of year. Uh, yeah, it is. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, boxer, we do get criticized a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've had, I, I've had, I've had people literally come up to me before and tell me that, uh, oh, they feel like, oh, well, you know, alcohol ended your career. Mm. No, motherfucker, I ended my career. Okay, got you. I was 27 years because old. Because you're drinking Modelo's? Well, back then, <laughs> uh, you know, I would drink. You know, when I, when I, in between fights, I would take time off. from. I would take a week or two okay. off and okay. do whatever I wanted. Yeah. And I'd get back into training. Uh, but um, but don't get me wrong. And that include lots of sex, drugs, and alcohol? Yes. Got you. <laughs> except, <laughs> well, actually, except the drugs. I, no you drugs, know, okay. Which, People think that oh, I automatically done drugs because I was an athlete. No, yeah. I didn't do drugs. I never done drugs. When I was 17 years old, yeah. I got high once. I smoked a joint okay. once when I was 17. Yeah. And I felt so horrible after it, and I was scared that the USA box team was going to find out. <laughs> yeah. And I'll get kicked off the team. And I, and I never, ever touched another drug in my gotcha. life. Gotcha. Do you believe that people think that I use cocaine? <laughs> Yeah, you're you're pretty wired. Up. I don't use cocaine though. I have never used. I've never even smoked a cigarette a day in my life. Well, what was that straw in your nose earlier for? <laughs> that was from something else that, that I did beforehand. Oh, well, there was something. It was from when you filled my mouth, ask. like you said earlier. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, the white the, the white wouldn't have been on the table. It yeah, that was a different white substance. <laughs> I thought I cleaned all that up before I got here. I'm right. My bad. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> no, but people think shouldn't that be I, messy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, people swear that I, like I've had people ask me like if I sell cocaine and if I use it. I'm like, no. Nah, 
like absolutely <laughs> not. You know what I mean? That sounds. <laughs> Well, I guess because you're pretty hyper. Well, I kind of hope that one day, like in that movie, the great is it the Great Gatsby when he was snorting cocaine out of that girl's ass. Uh, I believe, well, there's a <laughs> few the movies. Great Gatsby. I there's hope that that movies. happens to me one day. That would actually be kind of lit. You want some? You want some girl to snort cocaine off your ass? Uh, sure. <laughs> as long as her boyfriend's there with her yeah, okay. <laughs> Some, or maybe her man can do it how about that <laughs> there you, go. Yeah. you know what I, I, this is a fun fact I didn't I, so I thought you started the Waco Boxing Club that has been oh, around for a long time yes, um, how did you get involved with even running that club well I'm glad you asked that's, yes. a, good, that's a good part um, I ask all the questions <clears throat> that's a good part of it the, like I said I've been with the Waco Box Club since 78 okay. since I was 6 years old got you and um, uh, Quante was my trainer for mm. 19 years or so okay. and um, I was living in Hawaii at the time when I retired from boxing I was I had been living in Hawaii for the last couple of years mm. I had a training camp there and I just lived there because you know hell it's Hawaii why not mm. and um, I moved back to Texas uh, in 2000 Okay. I guess when I retired from boxing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know I was going to retire. I just told my agent, hey, man, I'm going a, I'm to a go home. I need a break. Yeah, for I sure. Need a, I need a fucking break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm burned. I've been doing this for 22 years we straight. We all do, I'm burned yeah. out. He's like, all right. All Did right, you ever cool. have to be cockstrung? I asked oh, that yeah. to all the athletes. Yeah, you got it, I asked you got that to Noni. I asked that to Carlos. I asked that to all the to, to the athletes. I did. I said, you know, I can't do that. You gotta be. Man. I mean, I'm in heat right now, but I'm not trying to go a long period of time with you know. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> but you know, but you know, you do, but you don't. Okay, it, it's to be honest with you. <laughs> that was one of the questions we asked our doctor when I was on the USA team. Yeah, you know, we had uh, when you're a member of the USA boxing team. The USA team are the athlete representatives okay. for every amateur boxer in the country. Oh, got you. And um, so, you know, we, we, we would talk to our doctor. We, we'd have actual meetings with doctors and everybody. Right. But we'd have questions, that, you know, about physical fitness and right, different right, things right. with our physical therapists, our, our, our athlete representatives, our, our physicians, everyone. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and one of the boxers asked the doctor, hey, is it true we can't fuck before a fight? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's the way he said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and she said, that's a good question. She's going to be honest with you. Whatever you're used to doing, uh -huh. your normal habit, keep doing it. If you're used to having sex once a week, keep having sex once a week. Uh, okay, gotcha. If you have sex every day, keep having sex every day because your body's used to it. She said, don't do anything different. Uh, okay, Don't gotcha. stop having sex and don't yeah. have more. Just okay, keep gotcha. doing what you're doing. So technically... You know, back in the old days, old school would say they say hey, sex weakens the legs, women weaken the knees. Yeah, they no, do. They, they do. Like I said, I was with the, with, with the gym for all those years. I gotcha, retired okay. and came back home in two thousand. And my trainer, Quate uh, Gilbert Sanchez Senior, mm -hmm. he died in 01. Oh, and um, I'm sorry to hear and that. And there's yeah, sure it was too. It was yeah. He was like a father to me. Oh wow. And my father passed when I was eight. And you were, yeah. And he was, I was still with the Waco Box Club yeah. from six till. I mean, oh, late twenty yeah. some odd years old. Still there now, and um, <laughs> yeah, I'm still there now. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, when he passed, and it, it's crazy because he started his very first facility was at the old Waco High School gymnasium okay. back in '72. Right, right. And um, and we had hopped around different facilities since then, but at that time in 2001. We uh, where the Cesar Chavez school is, yeah. Our gym used to be there, it okay. was the old lighthouse for the blind building. Oh, okay. So we were there, they 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 moved us, yeah, from there to the old Waco High School stadium gym again, right? Right, in 2001. And the day uh, Quate went to see the building to go mm -hmm. in there and let them know that, yes, we'll take we'll, we'll know, like, we accept this building, right? He died that day. Oh, wow, he died the day. Uh, he was getting back to a, where he originally mm -hmm. started mm -hmm. with the Waco Boxing Club. Oh no! And um, yeah, he had, he had broke his his leg and had a surgery and oh, just went came out. out of surgery. Okay. He came out of surgery fine, and then had a massive heart attack right <gasps> after. No way! He got out of the surgery like he normally does. He told a joke. Yeah, yeah. And laughed and then had a massive heart attack. Oh, back. that poor thing. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry and then, to hear uh, that. Okay. Yeah, he was he was a man. He was so awesome. I could never be as good as him. Right. Uh, with the gym, but but um, you know, I'll, I'll do what I can. Okay, gotcha. And um, so. When he passed, his son Gilbert Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, took over the gym. Him and his brother-in-law Derek Howard okay. uh, took over the gym for a couple of years and ran it. And then I got a call from uh, you know Gilbert calls me one day and said, "Look, 
Man, you know I haven't won anything to do with boxing for years. Yeah. I've been out of boxing since the eighties. I don't want nothing to do with it. You know I haven't for all these years, man. Yeah, he said, for sure. He said I, I just I, I can't do this. I'm a, the gyms are gonna close down, or you're gonna take it over. One right. of the two. Right. I said, man, I, I didn't want anything to do with boxing at the time. Right. I was still burned out. I still needed some time. Okay. I couldn't see the Waco Box Club doors close. Yeah. So I told him, I said, man, I'm all right. I'm I'm You'll gonna do it. Okay. I'm gonna do it. So uh, so late oh four, I took over the gym mm -hmm. and uh I've had it ever since. Okay. I've had a couple of people come in and help me in between. Right. In uh oh eight, I believe, uh brought in uh Johnny Garcia, who was one of our trainers original trainers in the late okay. 70s and then uh he brought in a uh, tony Montoya who boxed with us uh i mean oh yeah i, I mean had his sons on this show oh yeah okay yeah, cool. the montoyas yeah yes. the hunters well, right yes That's yes. Dad. yeah yes. yeah i met him yeah, yeah. And tony well, i mean tony didn't really box tony tony okay. uh, he may have had maybe four or five fights right i mean because he stopped boxing probably when he was Shit, eight, nine years old. He, okay. did, he didn't really box. He wasn't oh, okay. a boxer, really. He was just his brothers, his older brothers boxed. They were, right? Okay, got you. But, uh, so anyway, John brought him in to help. And yeah. uh, so I had them kind of helping. And then I had them running it for me for a few years, uh -huh. for you know, probably five years or so. And, uh, and then I, I, I came back in. And it's, it's one of the things it was like, you know, you want it done right, you got to do it yourself. So yeah. I, I came back. You know, I was like, you know, I went ahead and dedicated myself to it. Uh, I even stopped working, right. and I'm doing it full time now, so I can give it my hundred yeah, percent sure. to make sure it's being done right. And okay. and, and it was just me for mm -hmm. it was just me for a few years in the beginning. Then I had help, and then now and then it was just me again. Yeah. several years ago, but now I have is great. I've I've been the Wago Box Club. We're a family. Yeah, we're a family. We're, we're we're not a big corporate, you know, like Gold's Gym. All that. We okay. we are locally owned. We're close to our members. All right. We celebrate birthdays. <clears throat> we bring cake and candy and drinks Ooh, for nice. the kids. Everybody. Okay, we, got you. Yeah. And uh, the coaches and my coaching staff, we are all ex boxers from the Waco Boxing Club. Okay. I have Coach Watts Long. Uh, I love you, bro. Coach Watts Long. He's he was a boxer with us in the late seventies and early eighties. And uh, he's one of our coaches now. Oh, cool! And he coaches his grandson, who's there with us. He he's the main one who's been coaching his grandson. Yeah, nice. I've helped with him as well. So yeah. the other coaches, but Coach Watts has mainly worked with him. Okay. And uh, and I, you know, like I said, I've worked with him as well. But uh, and he's ranked right now like top eight in the country. Oh wow! Okay. And he's thirteen. He just turned. He just had a birthday. He just Ooh. turned thirteen years old. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It, it, top three of the top eight of the nation. Okay, gotcha. So you. that's awesome. And then, um, uh, so Coach Watts is one of my coaches. Then I have uh, Coach Dennis, Dennis Hanley. I love you, brother. Coach Dennis Hanley is one of my coaches. He used to box with the Waco Box Club when he went to Baylor yeah. back in like 90, 91, 92. Uh -huh. You know, he had a few amateur fights with us. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. now he's back at the Waco Box Club helping me coach. Oh, for sure. So, uh, That's so pretty cool. Then I've got a coach, George Falcone. Yeah, love you too, brother. Oh, okay. He's, uh, he used to box with us when he was a kid. I've heard that name. He started boxing with us yeah. back when he was probably eight, nine years old. <laughs> he yeah. has his own company, doesn't he? Yeah, his father, his uh, his yeah. dad owns the Falcone Welding. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. They sponsored an episode. Yes. yes. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah. so, mm -hmm. so he. he <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen. I have to call them. I haven't. Talked so to he's them. he's one of our coaches yeah, okay. as well. That helps. He does great with the kids, with the yeah, beginners, yeah. the little kids. He's great with them. Okay. So uh, so so it, it's it's cool, man. We got a pretty good program yeah, going on there. Good. We're doing good. Okay. And, um, and uh, well, you talk about Gilbert Sanchez. He he opened, he just opened up a gym too. I think a couple of months ago it was. Okay. And uh, that's. You know, I've heard. You know, I, I I bring this part up because I want to clarify something about Let's I saw it. on his his Facebook page about his gym, uh, WBA, Waco Boxing Academy is what they're calling it. Mm -hmm. uh, saying now uh, he's always wanted his own gym. This is what he wanted his whole life. He's always wanted that. But I remember the phone call when he called me to say he didn't want nothing to do with boxing. He hasn't for many years. So, but. You know, it's it is what it is with yeah. him, man. If that's what he wants to do. I don't he's know. He's doing him. it now. I, I didn't. Yeah. He's I'm he's sorry. opened up. He's <laughs> opened up a gym now. But, um, did you, did but you, I want to make sure everybody knows <laughs> there is no affiliation with WBC. Okay. And his gym WBA, because it, he gave a speech about how they were extending a helping hand to the Waco Boxing Club, and that they were extension of us. That is false. That is false. Okay. He is not an extension. Their gym is not an extension of ours. We are not affiliated in what in any way whatsoever. The actually the Sanchez family has had nothing to do with the Waco Boxing Club for at least eighteen years now. Oh. 
I've been the one controlling it okay. for most of this time. I've I've been, it, it. I'm the sole proprietor. I've got a couple of sponsors. So I'm gonna shout, send a shout out to my boy Tony Lenars, the owner of Syntex Roofing System. He's been a sponsor for a few years now. Okay, he does sponsor a little bit every month. Yeah. Uh, to help us keep the doors open. Okay, appreciate that. And uh, and uh, Dunham and Dunham has helped us out a lot. Cheryl Villarreal. Uh, Marilou, she, I mean, they've been awesome. Yeah, they've sure. helped us out with sponsoring tournaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've been great, man. Okay, got you. A few more of the lawyers over there. And yeah. then uh, Elgin Quisador, I got to tell them thank you. They've sent us a check earlier, uh, well, last year. Okay. they done a uh, sponsored tournament and helped us out with yeah, some things. Yeah, definitely, so, most definitely. So it has been awesome, man. Okay, we, we've you. had some sponsors. And then right. the Falcone Welding is yeah. uh, helping sponsor our insurance for this year. Oh, good deal. And, okay, got you. So we, we, have, we have a few sponsors that, that they help us out, help us make it along as well. Right. You know, there's, there's a lot of boxing clubs that uh, have opened in town and stuff like that. And, you know, I could definitely hear in your voice that yeah, there's, you sound a little angry about it. <laughs> and so, I mean, sure, maybe maybe the guy had a different change of heart. Do you ever consider stuff like that? Like, you know. Well, <laughs> oh, man, I'm, I'm tr- I don't want to be rude because I love Gilbert. I yeah. do. I love Gilbert Sanchez. His, I don't his, know him, his, by his the way. I don't think like I've a, ever met him. Yeah. His dad was like a father to me. So, okay, gotcha. you, know, but, you know, but our relationship is separate from Gilbert. Yeah. But Gilbert, I love Gilbert. Yeah, I, I've known deal. him for okay. many years. Yeah. We, you know, I'm not. I don't. I'm not trying to talk bad about the man. Okay. It, it's just. I just want to clarify that we are not. Okay. We are not working together any kind of way at was, all. And was there a lot of people that were confused that that, that WBA yes. and WBC were together? Okay. Well, gotcha. I've had. I've actually had a couple of his family members come to me and say, "Hey, man, what the fuck's going on?" Oh. He said something. Something up with you and Gilbert? I said, nope. That's just Gilbert. But don't you feel like people really just want to like um, act like they, they they have to pitch you guys against each other because um, you own two different boxing clubs? Uh, I don't know. Like when his family was asking me, they 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 truly want to know. Hey man, what's going on? Oh. <laughs> what happened? You know, they're coming to me because a lot of the Sanchez family they're like family to me. I grew okay. up around all of them. Yeah. You know, we're I, I consider them to be family as well. Right. But you know, sometimes family don't get along. Yeah. But I do get along with them. <laughs> to say that I do get along with them. But hey, man, I don't know, dude. I think it's, to be honest with you, it's bullshit. Gilbert knows I think it's bullshit that, that he, he did that. He, mm-hmm. You know, because when he first said he was doing that, he said, well, he first went to help another gym, a whole other gym. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, I saw kids and need some help. So I just felt like I needed to come help the kids, even though there was no kids in that gym. But I had at least 30 of them in my gym. And he knew. I needed help. He knew I had asked for help. He knew I'd been trying to get help, mm. but never wanted to come in and help. But hey, all right, you know, whatever, dude. And uh, then he said, well, okay, well, honestly, well, I just needed to be my own boss. Uh. And this is your gym. You're the boss. Can't nobody take the Wake Up Box Club from you. It's yours. Okay. And I have to be the boss. Okay. Like, all right, what, what is, I don't understand what that means. If you want to pay the rent, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> I don't I don't have to do that. You can pay the rent. You can pay the bills. I don't care. Okay. Gotcha. But, uh, but uh, you know, it is what it is with it. it it's, um, it does, I guess it does hurt some because, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, you, you seem like you're hurt. That's what I'm trying to get. Anyway, uh, you know, Gilbert, like I said, I love them. You know, they're doing their thing there and I wish them the best. Yeah. But just, but just clarify it, man. You know, be honest about it. You're, mm. They're not a part of us. Okay, I'm, yeah. They're not a part of us. We but, but are, best we, of we luck, our own you thing. Know, best of but luck best luck with them. Yeah, I, wish sure. them, I wish them well because it's, it's great to have other boxing gyms in right. the city that yeah. we have more people to compete with. We have more people that we can work with. Yeah. It's great. I, you know, and I think because I want to backpedal too because like I, I was mentioning to you too. I, first, I really want to appreciate your candidness. I really yes. want you to know that I appreciate it because well, I, always I told want you people, from the beginning. No, I'm and I, speak I don't want mind. you to. I want everybody to always come on this show. That's what the public mm-hmm. affair is. You guys are supposed to come on here, state your opinion, state your, like that's what we, we don't audition. I don't tell you, no, you can't say that. You say whatever the fuck you want. You know what <laughs> I mean? I've said shit about people on this show that, again, people want to kick my ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> but what happens, um, Jaime, is that when we when we start these endeavors, okay, you know what I mean? Like even even having this show, people are really yes. quick to pit me against other podcasts. And I have no issues with anybody yes. running a podcast. Do you see what yeah. I'm saying? I want to use myself as an example. You know what yeah. I mean? Because it's, it's oh, oh well, you know, why don't why aren't you doing what so and so is doing? Or did you see how many views so and so got? Or, you know, oh, so and so's trying to copy your style. Or so but why has it got to be like that? 
Yeah. Like, why can't you just watch their show, appreciate it for what it is, and watch my show, appreciate what it is? Same thing. Well, I've had, you well, know yeah, what? I've sometimes, had, sometimes they do try to copy you. They do. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't focus on that, though, because I'm so focused on this. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, and so the same thing I've had, thing. Mike can tell you, I've had a plethora of barbers on this show. <laughs> I think that's the most occupations that I have on this show is barbers. And each, all of them have said, you know, they're, it's almost, they're not in competition with each other because there's not enough heads in Waco for them to, to cut. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Same thing for can be said for a boxing club. You know what I mean? Like I, I know of another boxing club where the owner is really, really sweet. I want to give a shout out to Dr. K. She's always been very kind to me with Superior Striking Gym. And, Dr. Uh, Calendar is very sweet with yeah, me as well. Love she, her. she handles all my physicals for my fighters. So oh, does she? Okay. We get along great. Yeah. So Dr. Great. Calendar is great. So, I love her. So in regards to that and your club and the WBA and all that, you know, maybe there's not enough people. Like what if everybody in town wanted to be a boxer? Can you fit everybody in your gym? Do you know what I mean? Like, I will do my room best. for all of us. You know what I mean? Hey, trust yeah. me, my gym gets pretty full now. We I've actually, seen it. I've we, seen it, yeah. We actually need a bigger facility. I got you, yeah. We do, because, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fortunate that, uh, well, the Waco Box Club has a reputation that it has. Okay. It has a reputation for pretty, producing yeah. great boxers. Right. Right. Uh, the Waco Box Club has said, oh, man, I, we are actually the longest-running boxing gym in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. We'll be celebrating 50 years in March. That's such a great thing. So that's it why is, man. You, you should take that and hold on to it, and hey, nothing else is relevant. I don't plan to you close those doors like, anytime soon. Yeah. We, we're doing great. And yeah. we have produced so many regional, state, and national yeah. champions. I couldn't even count that's them all. That's so great. Yeah. And then professionally, we've, we've had two world champions. Okay, I got you. It was myself. I yeah. won a world title. 96 mm -hmm. and then my little brother won a world title a few years oh, later. okay so the so, lead ones <laughs> yes the lead ones yeah i got you we are the only ones from the waco box club that have won world titles okay got you and uh and that's it and uh you know and not to knock any of the boxers of past and mm -hmm. but there really haven't been it hasn't been anybody really done much of anything okay. since the lead months right and i'm not trying to just toot my own horn but god damn it that's the way it is does it make you aggravated it does frustrate me because okay. I, I've had kids in there that are, that are that have some decent talent. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the heart, okay. and that's a problem with most of these boxers. They, they don't have any fucking heart. Mm. You know, you got a little bit of skill, but you got no fucking heart. You right. know, you don't want to you don't want to dedicate yourself. You don't want to want to dedicate yourself the way you need to. You can't play boxing, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. You can't play boxing. Mm -hmm. You you want to come in here and half ass train mm -hmm. and talk. About, oh well, I got to go do this. You know, and and. And don't get me wrong, I understand when, like, when, you know, I, I've had people say, well, I got my family or, you know, I got church or this. Mm -hmm. Great. But you know what? God don't want you to get your ass whooped either. <laughs> you know, I understand, you know, just because you go to train, you know, if you don't go to church doesn't mean you're turning your back on God. Yeah. You, you strike me as the type of person. <laughs> I, I, uh, God, I, I knew this conversation was going to go this way. I just knew it. I love it. I love it. Okay. God, you strike me as the type of person that boxing is like life for you boxing and, and, is life and it anything is else life. is secondary and it's irrelevant and if you're not putting boxing first like you're that guy you know what i mean well, you know what yeah. i want a world title okay <laughs> i want a world title. No, yeah that's totally great you know oh, yeah. because boxing is a lifestyle yeah boxing is a lifestyle okay if you don't live that lifestyle, don't expect to get much out of it. Mm. You're not going to accomplish very much because yeah. it is a lifestyle. It's going to, you have to live and breathe yeah. and eat and sleep boxing. That's the way of life. I had training camps where I would leave my family and I'd take off to a training camp. Mm -hmm. I had training camps in Colorado, Arizona, Vegas, Austin, mm -hmm. San Antonio. I would leave. I'd drive to the mountains in Arizona. I trained on a military base. Uh, I had a, a, a trainer, Doc Stowers, yeah, who yeah. was one of my USA boxing coaches, uh -huh. and who became a professional trainer of mine. Right. But, and I trained in the mountains in Fort Huachuca. Right. I'd be up in the freaking mountains training up there for six to eight weeks before okay. a fight. Then I'd fly, we, we'd fly off to a fight. Yeah. And then I'd go home for a week, and then I'd drive back to Arizona right. up in the mountains. And then, uh, then I moved to Vegas. I moved to Hawaii for yeah. uh, a training camp. You know, because I wanted, I needed to get away from Texas at the time. I had, uh, I needed I needed to get away. You gotta get away. Yeah. <laughs> there was a situation I had to get the hell away from. We don't want to talk about uh, that. Though. No, we don't. <laughs> okay. But uh, I was like, you know what? I, uh, I I told my my agent. I said, look, dude, I need to I need to get the fuck away. I don't, yeah. I, further than Arizona. I got you. I need to leave. Okay. So uh, he said, man, how about Hawaii? I said, fuck it, let's go. 
So I went to Hawaii and I stayed there for two years. Gotcha. And I had training camp there, and, and, and that's when that's when I ret- when I retired at the end. It, it's you know I accomplished what I wanted. I won a world title. Yeah. All my life I, I, in boxing, growing up, even as a kid, I had wanted to win a world title. Right. That, that was my goal. And you did that. And I did that. So. Yeah. And I always told myself if uh, if I ever stop loving the sport, I will stop right. because that's how people get hurt. Okay. So. Man, that that does it so, does it grind your gears? Okay, so like I guess for you, is it if somebody doesn't pursue to win a world title, like do you take that personal for some reason? Not really, because because uh, it could be short term goals. Yeah, you know, you could be setting these smaller goals, and you know, once you reach in, then you'll reach a little higher. Then you okay. reset, you get a little higher. Then you get up to the world title. I had always wanted to win a world title. Yeah, but. Of course, I had to set the short term goals. Gotcha. Okay, I need to get ranked first. I, you know, I need to win so many fights, uh-huh. and then I'll look for the ranking. Once I get ranked top thirty of the world, right, okay, right. now I want to get top ten. Okay. Once I get in the top ten, I want a world title from then on. Okay, I got you. And I was, it was man, throughout my career, I, I you know, you know, when I fought for the world title, I was ranked top twenty of the world. Uh huh. Fought for a WBF welterweight world title in Manila. I had to go to Manila. And, you know, I, yeah, I'll tell you another story about that, which only a handful of people know. I uh, I was actually training for a fight mm-hmm. uh, on HBO against Jorge Boy Campos. Oh, wow. And uh, Jorge Boy Campos at that time was a three-time world champion, and, and I was going to go fight him. And uh, I was training, and during sparring at the gym, uh-huh. uh, we had headgears on and everything, and somehow this guy headbutt me. Right. Under the headgear, and I had to get nine stitches in my forehead. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. So I had to pull out of the fight. Right. So I was like, shit. So all through Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, I'm drinking, eating. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a <laughs> shit. You know, I can't fight. I, and uh, I get a phone call. I'm actually in church <laughs> at my nephew's baptism. Yeah. My brother Michael, his uh, son's baptism. And and uh, my trainer, Quate, was there in the church with me. And he said, hey, did you get that phone call? Or did you get my message? Yeah. I said, I heard a message, something about right. a, a world title. Yeah. He said, yes, they want you to go fight for a WBF world title in Manila. I was like, uh, oh, wow. that was for real? Oh, shit. He said, yes. Yeah. So yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, fuck. And, you know, and he tells me, he said, you, you need to get to the gym as soon as we leave this church. I got you. It's like, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So we get to the gym. He's like, he's like, he was like down. a father to <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm in yeah, church. Yeah. Like, oh, God, I still stink of reek of beer from the night before. Right. And uh, so anyway, Long story short, we talk, and I decided, okay, you know, um, I wanted a day to think about it. I okay. talked to I talked to uh, the guy calling him about the fight, the, gotcha. the promoter. I said, give me 24 hours. Okay. Because the fight was in 12 days. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, give me 24 <laughs> hours, right? You know, um, I was 22 pounds overweight. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, hadn't well, trained. All that. Yeah. I hadn't trained in, in about two months. Got gotcha. you. And anyway, the next day I, I come in there and Quad says, so what do you want to do? Uh-huh. I said, you know what, man, I've thought about it. I, j- I just, I, I can't turn down a I shot. Got you. I said, I'm probably going to lose. I know. I don't, but I don't want to live my life saying what if. I don't want to live my life and say, you know what, I could have fought for a world title, but I said no. Okay. Because I wasn't prepared. Yeah. Because yeah. I knew I wasn't 100%. I'm not, I'm not going to live my life with that excuse. Right. I'm going to. You know, I'm, I'm going to lose. I said, I know I'm going to lose. Okay. But I'm going to go in and I'm going to fight this motherfucker the best I can. Yeah. He's going to see some South Waco come out of this motherfucker. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm going to do it. I said, I don't care. I'm going to fucking do it. Yeah. He said, well, you know, you got to lose 22 pounds. I said, yeah, I know. Uh, and I only had eight days to train. Right. Eight days. And to lose 22 pounds. 22 and a half pounds ah, is what I lost. Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I went a little bit beyond. I, yeah, I got you. I, I lost 22 and a half pounds. Yeah. In eight days, mm-hmm. I trained for five days here in Waco. Yeah, flew, uh, you know, and they're a day ahead of us. That's why I lost that extra day. Mm-hmm. So they're a day ahead of us. So I flew, uh, we flew to Hawaii. I trained there that afternoon, right? Then we flew the rest of the way to Manila. Got you. And uh, I did my last three days of training there, and I lost the remaining like. In three, those three days, I lost like twenty pounds in those three oh, days. Okay, shit. Or no, actually not twenty. No, no, no. I'm, I'm I, fifteen is what I lost. I lost fifteen in Manila. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, then I was worried I'm gonna be dehydrated. I'm gonna be weak <laughs> for the fight the yeah. day, next day. And we actually, 
use the to make weight, we use the same exact scale Muhammad Ali and Joe Fraser used oh, wow. for the Thrill in Manila. Okay. They hadn't had a world title fight there since the Thrill in Manila. Yeah, yeah. So it was a huge deal in Manila. I met the president of the Philippines early. He was ringside. Manny Pacquiao was there at my fight. And, yeah, uh, for sure. You know, he wasn't even nobody then. Yeah. <laughs> but um and I, I ended up, you know, I went and, and uh, I yeah. fought and I ended up winning the world that's, title. That's real. That's freaking awesome. So bro. I got to come back home. With the <laughs> and you got to pose, not pose, but you know, like you, yeah. you listen. You achieved that accolade. You've obviously have been very successful in your career and everything. Um, unfortunately, we are running out of time. <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, we do have more to stories. I, can tell. I know. Damn it, we need to come two. back. You know what? I'm working on my follow ups. Okay, I'm gonna tell you I about a story about me and De La Hoya one day at camp. But uh, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> tell it. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, we are running out of time. No, but I do. I do want to revisit this conversation. I haven't and even told you about when I met my Ali. <laughs> Or when I did a commercial with Evander Holyfield. Look at all this shit. Or when I was on a TV show with Lennox Lewis. Yeah, yeah well, we talked so much about everybody else. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. True. You true. know what? I, would, I definitely, I, listen, it, it goes without saying, Jaime, that you, you've got a, a reputation in town. You um, definitely have achieved a lot in your lifetime. You're obviously a, an accomplished boxer. You won a, a world championship. Yes. You know what I mean? A, a world title. That's what yes. you call it. Okay. And so, nobody can say take that from you. you know what I mean? and, and I definitely, you know, I want to see you use Waco Boxing Club, which I'm sure you're doing now, as that platform for the up and coming boxer, yes. you know, and, and encourage them to do the same thing. Because there's yes. going to be that one person that's going to walk through your doors one day and is going to want to achieve a, the exact it's, same title as you. It's usually, uh, the, it's usually the one you least expect. Man, I, yeah. I've got some great kids in the gym right, right now. There's, like, like today, I was, I was telling my wife earlier, I had uh, 29, 29 people in the gym today. Uh-huh. And uh, twenty four of them were kids. Yeah, so it was awesome. So my good, my wife is also a trainer at the gym. Oh, okay. See, my wife is USA Boxing certified. Oh, darling. yes, sir. She's <laughs> USA Boxing certified trainer. I won't flirt with your husband anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> she probably she would. would whoop your ass. I know she, she would. She, I can't fight. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but you can flirt. It don't matter. I think she's used to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's hot. If you uh, let him come over, your bills will be paid. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Don't listen to her friend, no, her you. cousin. That, that's, <laughs> you're good. Uh, you're good. <laughs> uh, but but I do have some good kids there, and uh, we love it. Our program. Let me just say that for a minute. Mm -hmm. We we have our program there. We still, you know, people tell me all the time I'm stupid for this, but uh -huh. because it's 2022, but I still offer a, fr a free monthly program to kids oh, at my gym. Good deal. Because my trainer offered that when I was a kid. Yeah. So I I'm, I want to give. Uh, the same opportunities that were given to me. Yeah. Uh, to these kids. They can't say, oh, well, you're from Waco. You can't do anything. Right. You know, I'm from Waco. I'm not going to accomplish anything. Bullshit. Right. Me and my little brother both won world titles. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of brothers in the world that can say that. Mm hmm but in Waco, we can. That's good. Yeah. And, uh, so I still offer a free program. Okay. We do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You Well, there's a sign-up fee only. Right. You have a $60 sign-up fee. But then the rest of the year is free. Oh, okay. No monthly fees. Oh, dude. No monthly fees. You can come in That's on Tuesdays good. and That's Thursdays and train for free That's from good. five to six. Yeah. And um, but right now we are only doing it on Tuesdays because of COVID. Okay, gotcha. It, it it's getting worse. So yeah, we're trying to keep it. You know, not too many people coming in too right. much that are that are you know get too much exposure. We don't want to want to do that. But yeah, in our in our regular boxing programs. It's a one hundred and five dollar sign up fee, uh -huh. and then it's only forty five dollars a month. Okay. And your kids will actually get trained by a former world champion. Nice. How many people can say their Everything. kid gets trained for forty five dollars a month by a world, <laughs> by champion? world champion? Right? Yes, yeah. sir. And my yeah. other three, my other three, co four coaches with my wife are uh, certified USA boxing trainers as well. Oh, nice. And there's okay. not a lot of them here in Waco either. Got you. You know, some of these other gyms that say they're boxing coaches, so they're, they're, most of them aren't even certified. Okay, got gotcha. you. And none of them are world champions. So, right. <laughs> hey. Okay. Say what you want, but, no, but hey. no, we are we are gonna um, do a giveaway for this episode as well, right? Yes. That you said that you wanted yes. to do. Let's go ahead and tease that yes. real quick, and I'll be posting the contest here in a few. Yes, I, I called you yesterday and told yes, you good. that I had heard you've done giveaways before. Yeah, all and so the time. I offered. <laughs> I offered. I'm gonna give out a, a free month of a boxing boot camp. Oh. It's uh we do our boxing boot camp classes Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. We do one at five AM. Yeah. We do a lunchtime at twelve fifteen. Okay. Uh just 
you gotta let me know you're gonna be there for the lunchtime <laughs> because only I have a couple of teachers that do it, so yeah. it's usually only during the summer or holidays. Oh, I got you. But if you let me know a day before, yeah, uh, well, we do sure. the twelve fifteen class. Uh -huh. Then I do them at six thirty in the evening. So we got it for everybody's schedule: five a.m., six thirty in the evening, or lunchtime. And then yeah. on Saturdays at ten a.m. <laughs> so if uh, I w I'm, I'm gonna give that that's a hundred and twenty dollar value. Yeah. Uh, for a month, and we're giving that. it away for a month, darling. Yes, on a public we are. Affair. Yes. yes, we are. We'll give that away. Yeah. You can come in and try it out. We'll make some changes. Where you? I mean, come on. It's 2022. Make right. this year about you. Do Absolutely. something with yourself. I agree. 22, with you. 2022 <laughs> is about you. Yes. Let's do it. This year, I'm not going to be a side piece. I tell you what. I tell you what, I, I tell you what Mr. Side Piece. Yes. I'm going no to give you a month for free as well. If you oh, yeah. Come okay. <laughs> we'll see what's You up. come do it with your winner. You come do yeah. it with them. Okay. Whoever, whoever wins that month, you come do it with them. This sounds good to me. I could, I, you know, I probably, these days, I probably need to learn how to box. And, and then we'll have a Modelo, <laughs> we'll have a Modelo afterwards. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, you know what? Listen, I, I am very honored that you came on to the public affair to, you know, to talk. I know that we didn't get to cover everything but i would definitely love for you to come back on the show i wouldn't mind coming back i do i do i want to do it i want to have you back on the show sometime in the future um best of luck to everything with the waco boxing club thank you thank uh, you know i hope that you you you're gonna achieve everything that you set out to do um, you know, I have to go. I, listen, I got to give a shout out to the boxers that were on this episode as well. Not this episode, cool. prior episodes. Yes. You know, we talked about Noni. Noni's not doing the boxing right now, yes. but he's achieved a lot and everything that he said he wanted to do well, a year I've ago. Trained Noni. It. I've been in his yeah. corner for pro fights and amateur. Yeah. Very, very level headed guy. Love that guy. I've been in like Carlos's said, corner as well. Yeah. You know what? I, I'm always going to support that kid because he supports me. And anybody yes. who supports me, I'm supporting them 100%. Yes. Yeah. He wears, he wears the public affairs shirt to all his fights. So, I, yes, you you well, got hey, my stuff. Hey, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've coached Carlos. <laughs> yeah. I've coached Carlos. I've been kid, in his corner. Him. I've worked with him. Yeah, definitely. I love him. Um, and again, thank you. I'm sorry that we didn't get to cover everything, but we are running That's out of cool. time. And I'm really honored that you got to come onto the show. Um, we are going to be doing that giveaway, like he said. Um, if you guys want to go, um, you can follow Waco Boxing Club on Facebook at Waco Boxing Club. Yes. Correct. Sir. All right. Um, Jaime Lerma's on Facebook too, but he doesn't post a lot unless he's sliding in my DMs. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, hey, don't tell everybody. <laughs> and th thank you guys again so much for watching this episode of the show. Jaime, I look forward to having you back in the future. I definitely want to do I'd a love part to be two. Back. It, it's do we left out so much? But yes, we did. Can you imagine a three-hour episode of the Public Affair? Oh my god! <laughs> um, before we leave, I we definitely can definitely fill the, fill it. Trust we, me. Oh, I'm sure we can. I've got <laughs> okay. so many stories. Yes, we can. I, I'm down to fill it. <laughs> before we leave, I definitely want to give a shout He's out to down, a few more out. of our sponsors of the Public Affair. Of course, this episode is also brought to you by Soka Soccer Academy with Dominic Gutierrez and Ariana Gutierrez, located on Franklin Drive. I'm actually headed there, and if you right now to watch the soccer team that I sponsor, practice they offer. A team small group and individual skills training they also specialize in soccer training with dominic um similar to hyman dominic is training your kids to be the next soccer star um you can follow them on facebook at soko soccer academy or on instagram at soko 254 they also played a really big part in my weight loss they put cool. me in fucking shape dominic wasn't playing with me that's why i look like a snack there. look there i can wear go. this extra large sweater and i don't have the uh, good it's great <laughs> so, thank you soko soccer academy of course the fat boy michelada and botana my boy junior banda who provides the best michelada and botana plates for yourself or for a party. They're locally operated, so make sure you get the best and not the rest. Their Botana trays are to die for, and they have an array of different items as well. On their Facebook page, Fat Boy Michelada y Botana to my boy Junior Banda. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode, and of course, to Pollo Box and Audio with my boy Jeffrey Monreal, home for all your LED needs and auto accessories. They also focus on installation and stereos, door speakers, and audio systems, and they do they build custom subwoofer enclosures and much more. He's definitely a jack of all trades, and your one-stop shop to get everything done in one Roof to Jeffrey Monreal with Pollo Box and Audio. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. Again, to everybody who tuned into this episode of The Public Affair, thank you guys again so much. To uh, Mr. Jaime Lerma, world champion Jaime Lerma, thank you so much for taking the time to come on to The Public Affair at 9 o'clock at night. Yes, like sir, I said, anytime. I normally don't stay up this late, but for a nice, handsome man like you, I always stay up at any kind of hours. Well, right? technically, it was still a date. And you, yeah, it was. You killed those beers. <laughs> I'm thirsty. Who's driving him? I'll I've take been, him. I've been in the gym. Hey, I'll take him home. <laughs> And on that I note, my wife's listening. <laughs> don't forget to always keep it between us. <laughs> Drink your Modelo. <laughs>